Today is Monday, December 21st. What to know about a second vaccine going out to the public today and who experts recommend should be next in line to get it. Also, Congress is finally compromising. Lawmakers say they've made a deal on an economic relief bill. What's in it for most Americans? Plus, the Navy has sailors. Now the Space Force has guardians. We'll explain. And it's the day with the least amount of sunlight, while you may want to look up at the sky after dark. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Today, a second COVID-19 vaccine is rolling out to healthcare facilities all around the U.S. Already, more than half a million Americans have received the Pfizer version of the vaccine. Well, now healthcare workers and seniors in long-term care facilities will start getting the Moderna one as well. The FDA granted the Moderna version emergency use authorization on Friday for Americans 18 and older. And as we've mentioned before, this vaccine was shown to be over 94 percent effective in preventing illness from COVID-19 as long as people get two shots about a month apart. And this latest government authorization adds millions of doses to the U.S. supply. That means soon vaccines might reach more Americans than just healthcare workers and nursing home residents. So over the weekend, a CDC panel started talking about who should be next in line. It said people 75 and older, as well as other essential workers like firefighters, police officers, teachers, postal service employees and grocery store workers should get the next shots. But these are just recommendations. Ultimately, it's up to each state to decide exactly who gets priority. And the New York Times says there are plenty of other groups, companies, and organizations trying to convince decision makers to put their people first, like Uber drivers, restaurant employees, morticians, and barbers. And it's worth noting, different state health departments do have some different ideas about who should be closer to the front of the line. So expect each state's rollout to look a little differently. U.S. health officials are still hopeful everyone who wants a vaccine will be able to get one by the middle of 2021. And by the way, politicians have also been getting their shots. Over the weekend, Senators Bernie Sanders, Mitt Romney, Lindsey Graham, Chuck Schumer, and Mitch McConnell all received their first doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. And that's just to name a few of them. There has been some criticism that lawmakers got their shots before some health care workers, but lawmakers say they're getting them to show confidence in the vaccines and assure their communities the shots are safe. President-elect Biden and incoming First Lady Jill Biden will receive their first doses today. So far, President Trump has not announced plans to be vaccinated, but the White House press secretary says he's open to it. Expect a vote as soon as today. Congress has now sealed a deal on the next COVID-19 relief bill, and it's been months in the making, with negotiations going nowhere until recently. But now it seems a compromise is here. This economic relief package is worth $900 billion. And as part of it, most Americans will be getting a $600 direct payment. That's half the amount of the last stimulus check. But the same Americans who qualified for that other one earlier this year will qualify for this one. Now, this new relief bill also gives unemployed Americans an extra $300 a week in jobless benefits. That's also half as much as the benefits provided under the CARES Act previously. Also, more money will be going to schools, health care providers, hard hit businesses and renters facing evictions. Overall, this is a lot less than what Democrats were hoping for. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called it a first step while it was more than some top Republicans had originally wanted. Either way, both Pelosi and her Republican counterpart in the Senate, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, have now signed off. So the deal is expected to pass when lawmakers in both the House and Senate formally vote on the legislation likely today. By the way, Congress will also be voting on a $1.4 trillion government-wide funding plan. This is just the general funding package that has to be approved every year to avoid a government shutdown. It will fund agencies through next September. President Trump is expected to sign it. Health officials are sounding the alarm in other parts of the world. They say a new COVID-19 strain has appeared in the UK, Australia, and continental Europe. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson spoke about it over the weekend after meeting with his country's health experts. He said they found this new strain is even more contagious than the first one. In fact, he said it's 70 percent more contagious. But that said, there's no evidence to suggest it's any more deadly or that it causes more severe illness. Now, the World Health Organization says it's in close contact with UK officials and promised to give updates as it learns more about this latest strain. In the meantime, more restrictions are going into effect. A lockdown is now in place for 16 million people in London and southeast England, and that means all non-essential businesses had to close. People also are not able to travel or socialize indoors with anyone outside of their own household. 
And several countries like France, Germany, Italy, Ireland, and more have banned travel from the UK, all in an effort to stop that new coronavirus strain from spreading further. On a lighter note, back in the U.S., a cold front is expected to move across the entire country this week. And when it reaches the East Coast by the end of the week, it will likely bring millions of Americans a white Christmas. The storm system will start taking shape tomorrow around Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. People there will start seeing snow and heavy winds first. By Wednesday, it'll likely spread all along the plains in the middle of the country. At that point, forecasters say people from Oklahoma to the Dakotas could see some snow. By Christmas Eve, the same storm is expected to approach the eastern U.S. Some places could see a dramatic temperature drop as well. ABC News says parts of New Jersey could see temperatures near 60 on Christmas Eve, but single digits by Christmas night. Of course, since it's still early, the forecast could change a bit, so stay tuned. All right, we have much more news coming up, but first, this episode is brought to you by 1010. Now, you may have read about this in the New York Times or Forbes, and we're excited to tell you about it. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 one-of-a-kind engagement rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Using only diamonds responsibly sourced from Botswana, 10 design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful commitment ring launching exclusively on January 18th at BlueNile.com, and when they're gone, they're gone. We all know that the diamond engagement ring is iconic. It's a timeless expression of the deepest commitment between two people. And with 1010, it's been beautifully re-envisioned in the hands of 10 modern designers working exclusively with sustainably sourced diamonds. Now, if you're making 2021 plans or on the hunt for the perfect ring to wear forever, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Again, this exciting limited edition collection of diamond engagement rings launches on January 18th, and you can preview it exclusively at BlueNile.com. All right, now back to the news. Members of the U.S. Space Force will now officially be called Guardians. It's just like how the Army has soldiers and the Navy has sailors. Well, the Space Force will have Guardians. Vice President Mike Pence revealed the new name during a speech to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the Space Force, which, remember, is the newest branch of the U.S. military. Pence says the name Guardians was picked because it has a long history in space operations. For example, back in 1983, the original command motto of the Air Force Space Command was Guardians of the High Frontier. Now, that said, not everyone is on board with the new name. Some critics have pointed out it's similar to the Marvel franchise, Guardians of the Galaxy. The franchise's director even tweeted, quote, can we sue? Either way, the Space Force is moving ahead with it. And to be clear, Guardians won't actually go to space themselves like NASA astronauts. Instead, experts have told us they'll focus on things like gathering intelligence through satellites, GPS targeting for the military, and detecting things like missile launches. The holiday travel rush has started at airports around the U.S. TSA screened more than 2 million travelers on Friday and Saturday combined. One TSA spokeswoman said this is the first time since March that screenings have topped 1 million on consecutive days. Still, this is nothing compared to a pre-pandemic holiday season. Both days were down nearly 60 percent from this time last year. That's probably because of the strong warnings from the CDC and other health experts. They've been telling Americans to stay home this holiday season due to COVID-19. But TSA expects airports to be busy by pandemic standards all week. Well, get ready for some bowl games. After the regular college football season wrapped up on Saturday, the college football playoff committee revealed the final four teams yesterday. And they'll all face off in the bowl games or semifinals on New Year's Day. Now, first up, number one Alabama and number four Notre Dame will play in the Rose Bowl. Next, number two Clemson and number three Ohio State go head to head in the Sugar Bowl. But as ESPN puts it, this is one of the most controversial semifinal pairings ever. We can blame the pandemic for that. COVID-19 forced many games to be canceled and not every team played all their games. So the playoff committee had to look at how difficult each matchup was and how each team performed as a whole. Either way, the top four have been decided and both bowl games will air on ESPN on January 1st. Then the winners of the games will go on to play for the championship title on January 11th. Today is the winter solstice, and by some measurements, it's considered the first day of winter. It means today will be the shortest day and longest night of the year, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Most of the U.S. will see about 10 hours of daylight, but some states near the Canadian border will see the sun for less than nine hours. 
And with the long night ahead of us, it's worth looking up to the sky this evening to see a rare sight. Jupiter and Saturn will appear closer together in the night sky than they have in nearly 800 years. In fact, Earth Sky reports they might be so close that they'll look like one giant star, or they might look like they're right next to each other. But you won't have too much time to see it. The Washington Post reports the show will last only about two hours after sunset. If you want to see for yourself, look to the west-southwest as it gets dark, and if the sky is clear enough, you'll see the planet shining. NASA says they'll be so bright you'll even be able to spot them in large cities where there's a lot of light pollution. If the two planets are next to each other, Jupiter will be on the left with a somewhat rusty color, Saturn will be on the right, it'll be dimmer with a yellow hue. After tonight, they'll slowly get further apart. And that's it for your main news today, but now it's time for Money Monday, where we talk about one interesting money-related news story. And today we're talking about how a lot of Americans have a lot of money left to spend in only a couple short weeks. We'll explain more, but first, thanks to our sponsor, Ritual. If you don't feel like you really know what's in your multivitamin and why, then it might be time to switch. Some might have sugars, GMOs, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants, or just shady extras. But Ritual is different. I've been taking Ritual Vitamins for several months now. I was originally interested because of the company's transparency about their ingredients and sourcing, and because the multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. And then, when I actually started taking them, I also loved that I can now avoid bad-smelling horse pills for good, because Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly pills are actually fresh-tasting. For example, a mint tab in the women's multivitamin makes the pills smell and taste minty. And I've since gotten my husband to start taking a multivitamin as well. It's easy, too. They're delivered every month with free shipping, always. And of course, you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. You deserve to know what's in your multivitamin. That's why Ritual is offering the Newsworthy listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash newsworthy to start your ritual today. That's ritual.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Money Monday. And today we're talking about the money left over in flexible spending accounts, or FSAs. Unlike health savings accounts, or HSAs, this money in an FSA cannot be rolled over into the new year. You use it or lose it. And the firm Health E-Commerce says Americans give up between $400 to $500 million in unspent FSA funds each year. Well, if you're one of the people who still has funds left over this year, do not worry. There's a lot of ways you can spend the money. For example, if you've thought about buying one of those ancestry kits that tells you how your DNA could affect your health, that's eligible. Or you could also stock up on first aid supplies, baby products, nicotine patches and gum, or sunscreen. And one more thing we want to mention, since it's new, women can now use FSA dollars to buy pads, tampons, liners, or other feminine hygiene products. And there's a lot more. To see some more options, check out the online FSA store or Amazon's FSA store. All right, thank you so much for listening today. If you got value out of today's episode, be sure to share it and pass it along. Of course, we'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.